In today's video, we'll talk about social welfare. What is social welfare? Well, social welfare is simply a product of our consumer surplus and producer surplus. So when you look at social welfare, we say social welfare or, uh, or what we call community welfare or social surplus. Let's call this social welfare or surplus. So social surplus, we say, is a sum of consumer surplus, consumer surplus, and producer surplus. And from a society's perspective, whenever consumer surplus and producer surplus is maximum, that is the point where social welfare surplus or social welfare is maximum. Now, how will we achieve that? Well, we say, well, our demand curve is downward sloping right and our supply curve is upper sloping for example right and so far what we've also established is that consumer surplus is going to be area under the demand curve above the market price so if demand supply meets at this point the market price is p naught the quantity is q naught so the consumer surplus will be a x p naught all this area under the demand curve above the market price while producer surplus will be um, B P naught X which is going to be this area right so my total consumer surplus will be uh, P naught A X and total producer surplus will be P naught X B now is this the maximum surplus that the consumer and producer can get and the answer is yes because if I end up not producing Q0, but a little less quantity, let's say Q1, then I will end up with what we call a deadweight loss, a social welfare loss. Why? Because this part of my consumer surplus and this part of my producer surplus will not be, will not be happening or will not be occurring because I produce Q1 rather than Q0. So therefore, we argue this, that the point where demand meets supply we get the the quantity which is determined by the market forces of demand supply this quantity results in the maximum possible consumer surplus so the area of this triangle is the maximum if i end up producing a little less we might end up having a case where some consumers will be denied of the good and as a result of that some producer will be denied of producing that good and we lose uh, a consumer surplus which God can be called what we call deadweight loss if I end up producing Q1 uh, my deadweight loss will be let's call this W and let's call this Z so my deadweight loss or social welfare loss as we call it it's called a deadweight loss or social welfare loss will be W X Z right so therefore it is in the society's uh, sort of welfare or sort of society's benefit to produce at the point where demand meets supply where consumer surplus and producer surplus will be maximum and society's uh, or community's welfare surplus will also be maximum. Similar to this idea guys uh, since Q0 is the right quantity that is produced is and Q1 is what we call under producing a good what if we end up over producing a good what if we produce for example Q2 now, will this Q2 result in more surplus or less surplus? And the answer is it will result in less surplus because if you look at from the consumer's perspective, when the market price is P0 and the producer ends up producing Q2, the willingness to pay for this good is at this point. Let's call this uh, P or let's not call it P, let's call it uh, E, right? But at the same time, what the producer wants when he produces Q2, uh, because his cost of production is pretty high, he wants the price of F. So there is clearly a case of any point or any production beyond Q0, there is clearly a case where the cost of making the good is more than the price that consumers are willing to pay. And therefore, there is what we call an overproduction or over uh, provision of the good. And that also means another deadweight loss equal to X F E because of the fact that now the producer has wasted resources by producing too much of the good. So the argument that we're raising here is this, that when you look at Q naught, Q naught is the point where the consumers are happily consuming 
this quantity and producer happily producing this quantity and there's neither over or under consumption or production of the good. This brings us to the similar concept, which is something called um, the marginal decision rule. The marginal decision rule is the idea that when you look at a rational consumer, consumer who's looking at his benefit and cost, he will always make sure that the extra benefit he gets from the good, which is called our marginal benefit that he gets from the good, you know, what he's willing to pay must be at least greater than or equal to the cost of that good or in other words, the marginal cost of that good. What do we mean by this? So for example, let's say if I'm willing to pay for a good uh, $10, but the price of the good is $5, should I buy the good? And the answer is yes, because you're willing to pay more. Your marginal benefit or willingness to pay is more than the cost of making that good. But what if your marginal benefit for a good is $4? But the cost of that good is five dollars. Will you end up uh, consuming the good? And the answer is no, because the marginal benefit or utility that you get is lower than the price of the good. So the argument, therefore, we raise when we look at a demand curve, our demand curve is simply our marginal benefit that we that we uh, get from consuming good, and we'll keep on consuming as long as the marginal benefit is more than the price, or in other words our consumer surplus is positive. When there comes a point when the marginal benefit is lower than the price, we will not consume the good. So till Q0, you will agree with me that each and every point has the benefit or marginal benefit more than the price that we pay for the good. And that's why we are pocketing some consumer surplus. We will stop at this point because our marginal consumer surplus is actually zero because after this it will become negative. The marginal decision rule actually argues this, that uh, if the marginal cost is more than marginal benefit, it is rational for us or it is beneficial for us uh, or logical for us to not consume a good. And that is where every decision that an economic actor is making uh, depends upon. So whenever I'm, um, if whenever I am producing a good or consuming a good, I will look at marginal decision rule. For example, from a producer perspective, if the cost of making the good is $5, but the price in the market is $4, will he produce that good? And the answer is no, because he will end up uh, having a good which no one is wanting to buy. Um, and so he will never produce that good. And, and this principle or marginal decision rule will also be applicable to governments. For example, if a government is thinking that uh, they should build a road, uh, the cost of making the road is, let's say, uh, $1 million, but the benefit that it gives the consumers is only, or, or the benefit it gives to the society is less than, let's say, $1 million. Let's say they are able to figure it out. Should they build the road? And the answer is they should not make the road because that will not be beneficial for them to make the road. So that's what we call the marginal decision look. We weigh our cost and we bear our benefit. And as long as the extra cost is less than or equal to extra benefit, we will end up doing an activity.